today we're going to the USS Lexington in Corpus Christi. This is an aircraft carrier from World War II. This was actually the second carrier named Lexington. The first USS Lexington aircraft carrier, which was built in 1922, actually was sunk in uh, 1942. Uh, it was badly damaged by the Japanese, and so I believe uh, uh, the American battleship actually sunk it, or what they call scuttled it, so that they could not capture it. And that one was actually nicknamed the Lady Lex. And uh, there was another battleship being built, which was going to be called the USS Cabot. Uh, and it was changed, they actually changed the name of the USS Cabot to the Lexington. And they, one of the reasons they did this was to demoralize the Japanese because they were celebrating the sinking of the ship. Um, so the new battleship, or the new USS Lexington aircraft carrier, was actually nicknamed the Blue Ghost due to rumors that the Japanese thought it had been sunk and then kept seeing it again. So we're going to go check out that USS Lexington Museum. They have an escape room, they have a flight simulator, um, about five different self-guided tours you can take as well as guided tours. Uh, they got food and uh, a few different uh, historical movies on there. We're going to check that out today. So keep in mind when you're coming in, you'll be coming in on, I'll just show you behind here behind me. You'll be coming in from that direction, going this way. This parking lot will be on your left, but you haven't made it to the Lexington yet. It's like a block that way. Um, go ahead and pull into that parking lot because what it does is it wraps you around this way and you come down this street right behind me here to where the Lexington is, but there's no parking on, on that side. It's back where I'm at. However, those what appear to be entrances over there, they're exits only. So you're going to want to pull into this parking lot. It's $4 or $5, like four or five parking lots right here, one block away from the uh, Lexington. Oh, we got a team over here, man. We're gonna pay, gonna pay more than you old people. Than you guys aren't seniors. Well, thanks. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Now, unfortunately, one of the things I wanted to do was do the battle stations, but they are all being upgraded, so no joy. Now they're nuclear, they're much, much heavier and much bigger, much bigger. But they will never see the the combat that these ships saw. This will carry how many men? Uh, this one here carried as many as, as 3,500. Uh, the new one's carrying it in excess of 5,500. Oh, I forgot to turn these in. Oh. Yeah, that was the original one there. CB2, the one that was sunk, and then they changed the name of the new one to USS Lexington. Oh. You're going to enter the most luxurious area of the ship in a few minutes. 
Yeah. Kitchen. Kitchen. But you, know, <laughs> you see, are y'all familiar with the Navy very much? Semi. Well, you know, World War II, of course, we were up against two major navies, the German Navy in the Atlantic and the Japanese in the Pacific. So when you'd leave <clears> port, we'd form up. Carriers will always be in the middle. You have a screen of ships surrounding carriers, basically cruisers and destroyers. They would escort the carriers. The enemy planes would have to throw the gunfire of these outer ships to get to the carriers. So this is your basic formation you had during the war. Okay. Look at that recruiting post. Look at the pay scale per month. Seventeen sixty to seventy-seven dollars per uh -huh. month. That was World War One. That was a hundred years ago. Wow. Gave it the name. The Japanese. Tokyo Rose. Oh. Tokyo Rose. She was a Japanese American, born and raised in California. Yeah. Uh, she went. Uh, her aunt got sick in Japan, so she went to visit her aunt in Japan, and, they, and the war broke out, so she was trapped there. So the Japanese put her on long-distance propaganda radio to do propaganda for the Japanese, and uh, since she knew American music, that we used to turn in, they used to play Glenn Miller and yeah, yeah. Dorsey's and all that of the day, you know, and then she went to uh, Japanese propaganda. After the war, uh, when we occupied Japan, we went and found her, flew her back to the state. She was tried for treason and given a 10-year sentence. She only served six years of it. That big blue carrier, we were the only carrier painted blue, the only ship out in the Pacific painted blue instead of gray. So she so gave up became... one day and said it was like a blue ghost. So both Tokyo Rose gave it a nickname. Um, the ship is uh, nickname. What's your name? Bill. Hi, Bill. Hi, Bill. Hi, Bill. That. It didn't say I couldn't touch it's it. It's red. You don't touch red things. It didn't say I couldn't touch it. <coughs> Purple heart. Yeah. Yeah. My means father you, had that. Means you had a bad day. Yeah. Oh, right. are we ready for our lessons? Yeah. I hope they climb. <laughs> so, um, where did the blue ghost get its name? Tokyo Rose. Tokyo Rose. Who is she? Was an American faded away. <laughs> but that's a damage control plug. Oh my god. Crazy. <laughs> Bob Partle pulled it off. Vietnam. These two F4 Phantoms are in a mission in North Vietnam. They both got hit. He was losing fuel. He wasn't going to make it out. He's preparing after bail out and get captured. Bob Partle came up behind him. Partle was also hit, but he wasn't losing fuel that bad, but he knew his friend was in bad trouble. So he flew up behind him, raided him, told him to drop his tail hook and turn off his engine. Carter moves that four foot tail hook against his windscreen and he pushed him 88 miles to Lawless, but he got saved. It's only been done once. It's impossible to do that, but Bob Pardo did it. That's Bob Pardo right there. It's wow. called Pardo's Push. of a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. But these are pictures of all the 33 captains of this ship. The second picture here, Captain Robbins, he retired as rear admiral, but he was the third captain. Now, he said, this is the captain. Men, I have a sad duty to inform you that we have just received word of the death of President Roosevelt. I know you will join me in realizing the extent of our personal as well as national loss. President Roosevelt was a great leader and a great for our mission. The squadron leader called back to the ship letting you know how the mission's going. See, the officers are down here. The guy in the white t-shirt back there yeah. has to learn to write backwards so he doesn't interfere with the officers seeing the blackboard. Captain's order. Captain. Round up that delegation, bring them up that ladder into here and wind and down them. Now all these pictures, all these famous people, uh, entertainers, politicians, military men, there's MacArthur and Nimitz for instance. Wow. All these famous people have been aboard this ship at one time or the other over the years. <laughs> now, you know Blake Shelton? Yeah. He was the last one. He was here in 2014 to shoot a Pepsi commercial and he gave a concert on the flight deck. And Blake Shelton is the last one given permission to spend the night in the captain's bedroom. Oh, and next to that chair, the captain has his own escape hatch. Oh, uh, I see. 
So if there's a fire in here and the cat is trapped, he could undog that, kick it open. There's a catwalk out there to make your play with flight tech and safety. When y'all walk through uh, over there on the other side of the Admiral's cabin, go to the Enterprise room. Yeah. You pass the captain's office. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, when Blake Shelton spent the night in the captain's bedroom, his yeah. entourage spent the night in here. Oh, oh you're right. kidding me. The so we had it all decorated, flowers and everything. And uh, oh, but what I want to show you is what you saw from, the, from that porthole to the captain's office. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. You know, you all the yeah, 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 you I just remember. peek through there. Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting things is the captain does not have any legs. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> he's sending the cushions. Look, he's. Lieutenant Diane. Lieutenant Diane. Lieutenant Diane. Well, you ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Diane. Lieutenant Diane. Oh. Lieutenant Diane. Lieutenant Diane. <laughs> Behind the there. scenes oh, of the USS that that Lexington. <laughs> But look at this plaque here. Commander Hepworth set a world's record. He landed on this ship 600 times. 600 arrested on arrested a single... Arrested landings. Oh, arrested. You come landed. in, you drop your wheels and your tail hook, and you come in, yeah, tail yeah, snags yeah. the arresting wire yeah. to stop you. That's the 600 on this ship. He did ship. it 600 times on this one ship. Wow. And so they have admirals coming on the ship. Well, yeah. They meet all if, here. If you have a whole task force and like 20, 30 ships all in a group, one ship is a flagship. If we're the flagship, for the admiral's chief of staff, flag lieutenants, communication. Ah. This is where the admiral and the staff would have meals and meetings in this room. But the admiral's job is to coordinate a whole group of ships. But he's temporary. After a month on one ship, he and his staff transfer to another ship, and that would be the flagship. Like it was. 
one of the volunteers. So you it liked it, and you're not a big history buff, but you liked, like I, like I said, my favorite part was the old war veteran volunteers, yes. or maybe even if they weren't in the war, they at least served on those same vessels that they're talking about, and they're so passionate about telling you about the, uh, the ship itself. Um, all, all the different planes were pretty nice. Uh, the, the 3D movie was fairly cool. But it, I mean, it was about the... Uh, I thought it was cool. It was very informational about the... What was it called? The International Pacific Rim Fleet or something like that? Yes. Uh, the formation that they take. It's yeah, it's a multi-country coalition state. Navy force basically preparing. Um, the main goal is to prevent us from having another major, major war. And so that was pretty neat to learn about that. One of the uh, flight simulators was out of service. Uh, the one that we did, the flight simulator they have, that was $5 per person. Um, it really isn't a flight simulator. It's more of just a, like a, a ride. You sit in and it, it's animated. It's like the roller coaster. Yeah. It's like the uh, the amusement park type ride, so I probably would pay five dollars that for that. So. But all in all, um, what well, we spent about two and a half hours there. There was so much history stuff. If you wanted to, you could probably spend ten or fifteen minutes in each room, and we probably only spent maybe three to four minutes in each room. Some a little bit longer that kept our interest, but uh, it was pretty neat.